So there's two uh, versions of the androgen receptor, <clears throat> the ARA and the ARB. And the ARB is the classic one that goes mm -hmm. into the nucleus. That That's the one that we really want. The ARA, as understood now, it seems that seems to be the one that's stuck on the cell surface. That, that I want to bring that to like this new discovery of the uh, the androgen receptor mm -hmm. that, that you had, Kurt. Because there's a, a, a new truncated version of an androgen receptor, which seems to miss the mm -hmm. GAC repeats. Now, off air, we speculated that the production of this androgen receptor might be a misfire due to androgen mediated gene transcription. But let, let's discuss that a little bit more here uh, on air. Uh, Kurt, what did you find uh, so far? So there's two uh, versions of the androgen receptor, <clears throat> the ARA and the ARB. And the ARB is the classic one that goes mm -hmm. into the nucleus. That that's the one that we really want. The ARA, as understood now, it seems that seems to be the one that's stuck on the cell surface that doesn't cause gene transcription. So it's truncated, which means it's shortened. So a normal yeah. androgen receptor has 919 amino acids, and this one is missing the first 187. I'll um, show it on uh, on screen. Oh, so it's uh, missing. Um, where is it? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So it's missing, you can see the, the AF1 section is completely gone. And so while the lingon binding domain at the end on the far right is typically what we would consider where the androgen would bind to, missing the AF1 part inhibits the androgen from fully binding to this. Um, so then you have a bunch of things that then occur downstream. Then estrogen can basically push off the androgen because it's not fully bound. Uh, normally when an androgen binds, it'll push estrogen off, but now it's the opposite thing is gonna happen. Um, this will not result in protein synthesis. So th this is most likely what's occurring with things like anadrol is it's binding mm -hmm. to that ARA receptor. Mm -hmm. uh, what it's exactly doing, we don't know. Um, but like you said, so what's chromosome 11 and 12 contain the, the, the material to make the androgen receptor. Something's going wrong during protein synthesis that's creating these, whether it's environmental or um, you know lifestyle things or just some genetic thing that's occurring, but it's missing the polyglutamate repeats as well, the CAG repeat. Right. There's no CAG repeat at all. Um, and that's concerning because there's an ideal range of CAG repeats where the androgen receptor binding is heightened yeah. and then a shorter version or a longer yeah. version then has reduced androgen receptor binding. And you could see that allegedly with African-American heritage yeah. to have the ideal range of CAG repeats allowing them to get much more transcriptional activity from the same amount of androgens because it just binds so much tighter. And there's, there's no genetic analysis for that, unfortunately. I looked. Um, no, but the, find the, it. a lot of this is new. So it's the, like you were saying, so there's a shorter, shorter CAG repeat is considered better, at least for the stuff that we do, right? But also yeah. shorter CAG repeats tend to result in things, not necessarily directly, but things like prostate cancer are more prominent in a shorter yeah. CAG repeat. It's True. also possible that over transcription, what's happening is the CAG repeat's getting shorter and shorter until it's fully gone. And it's possible that this transition between ARB and ARA is not a one-step thing, that it's just occurring over time until the CAG repeat is fully gone, right? Like it might start oh. shorter and then slowly, right? As, as it's, as it's, you know, constantly replicating, it's constantly missing amino acids through the, you so know. Same as what happens to the telomeres of the DNA. Yeah. So is it aging? So we need epithalon for the androgen receptor. There you go. <laughs> but this explains yes. why you see insensitivity, like one of the reasons why you see insensitivity with androgen receptors. So there's obviously a thousand different uh, polymorphisms that can occur with the androgen right. receptor that we know of. But this seems to explain a lot of uh, like non-response that you see. We we've mm -hmm. all had clients that regardless of the androgens that they use, they don't really respond particularly well. This could, this could explain that. This could also explain the, the, the amount of the ARA versus ARB could explain things like side effects, right? So the people that are very sensitive to things like trembolone perhaps have more ARA and they're not mm -hmm. actually getting the protein synthesis from it. They're just getting the calcium ion stimulated nerve stuff, right? Which is going to cause, you know, overstimulation, anger. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, central nervous system stimulation. Okay. So yeah, it's very interesting. And, and of course, scientifically, this hasn't really been investigated that much because it's, it's reasonably new. Yeah. Um, information. And so all of the scientific evidence is basically regarding androgen receptors has been performed on ARB mm -hmm. activity, not on ARA. And do you think this will ever be investigated? Or? I do for sure. So it was discovered okay. in, it was discovered in cancer. And it turns out mm -hmm. that a lot of the estrogen dependent cancers 
when they stopped looking at that and they moved over to the androgen receptor, they found that there was more ARA so that mm-hmm. DHT could no longer perform its actions, right? And kind of bump. D- DHT would normally help balance out the estrogen and not allow mm-hmm. estrogen to fully transcribe. And that's, it's very possible that, you know, that it, it needs to be explored because it's, yeah, it has a lot of health repercussions. Because you see in the scientific evidence that diet of testosterone has been linked to inhibiting estrogen-mediated gene transcription in various cancers. So basically when DHT um, interacts with the estrogen receptor, uh, estradiol can't really potentiate its full effect. And of course, if estrogen binds to the androgen receptor and, and the GAC repeats are missing, allowing for normal androgen binding, they get some sort of weird transcription or impaired transcription. Or no transcription. Estrogen, or no transcription, right. And that also means you get depletion of androgen receptors, which would otherwise have a beneficial yes. effect. Yeah. So it's going to, once it starts, it's going to continue and get worse, right? Because then there's, there's no protein synthesis occurring. So then there's no new androgen receptors being made. Exactly. Yeah. And then you basically deplete to the point you're completely, uh, you have androgen insensitivity syndrome. Yep. Ah, do you think that you get androgen receptor B transcription from the DNA and then through some enzymatic reaction, the, the GAC repeats are cleaved off, resulting in an androgen receptor A variant? Or it's like occurring during transcription. Yeah, enzymes. or it's occurring during transcription, right? Right. When, when A or B is supposed to be formed, it's not forming correctly. Now imagine if this is caused by oxidative stress, that the link at it the 188th uh, or uh, yeah, 188 position is is susceptible to oxidative stress, like DNA is susceptible to oxidative stress, and mitochondrial dysfunction is the cause. Could be. Well, why why are these things getting more prevalent now versus uh-huh. in the past? No, granted, they weren't necessarily reported or discovered, and the life expectancy used to be much shorter. So it's mm-hmm. it's hard to say, but it's uh, my guess is it's a lifestyle thing, right? Drinking, smoking. Yeah. Poor diet, lack of exercise. These things very well could at least contribute to this. Is that causing it? I, I can't say that. That's not a that's not a valid statement, but no. Yeah. I I'm trying to remember if I have like clients in the past that have some sort of androgen uh desensitization or non responsiveness to androgens, whether they switch to a natural and only cycle or not, even then nothing happens. What their lifestyle was, if they were drinking, smoking, oxidative stress genetic hereditary yeah. well, issues. Well, nandrolone wouldn't work for sure, right? Nandrolone no. only binds to the AR. So its action is like same with Primo, right? That's its only mode of action. So right. it's not gonna, none of those, Trembolone wouldn't do much. Mm-hmm. You know, or po- positive, yeah, so, we should say. They're still going to cause other effects in the body, just not a positive effect. Because you see some guys that had like a terrible lifestyle and then they need TRT and they go on TRT and nothing happens. That, that That's pretty clear that they were under oxidative stress, drinking, recreational drugs, stress, et cetera, right? Okay, that happens. But I'm trying to think now back in time where I had guys that were otherwise healthy that switched to, um, switch to uh, you know, TRT for, for androgen replacement therapy or bodybuilding purposes, and then nothing happens. I'm trying to think about it. It's been a while since I really helped guy and guys. Like you, you work more with these guys than, mm-hmm. than I do in a coaching capacity. So do you see a correlation between lifestyle and androgen insensitivity? It does seem that the people that seem less sensitive to androgens either had a, a poor lifestyle habits in the past or currently still have some overlapping things like some drinking, um, a tendency just for bad stuff. Yeah. And, and then they don't, they're not really responsive. Do you think that these guys are, are subjecting like, like uh, manual labor, for example, where you're subjecting yourself to environmental pollutants, uh, BPs, A's? Endocrine disruptors, that kind of stuff, because I mean, sure, every every possible. job has its potential risk. Like I, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, think out loud and see where this is coming from. Whether it's is a transcriptional error or this actually happens after transcription, the the androgen receptor is formed, and then due to some sort of exogenous mishap, all the GAC repeats are cleaved off. I'm gonna guess it's during translation or transcription, mm-hmm. but it's it's very possible that it's still occurring after the fact, like it, it trend, like the, it, maybe it starts as an ARB and it goes to the cell surface and something occurs to the yeah. cell and it cleaves off. And then, and and then the, it can no longer go in and generate, you know, androgen receptors anymore. Then you would basically should be able to find these 187 amino acids that contain the GAC repeats floating around in the bloodstream. So that might be something to look into like uh, as a metabolite, right? Like what, what they drew with drug analysis, 
and regarding excretion studies, they have this, this compound, it's cleaved into mm -hmm. a couple fragments, and they look for these amino acid sequences. If it's being cleaved, if it's just happening during protein synthesis, then no, right? They're just not being formed. Right. Yeah. So that, that remains to be investigated. Yeah. But yeah, it, it does explain why some people respond better to other things besides the gak repeats. I mean, if you're missing gak repeats, nothing much is going to happen. Just like uh, Dean's internet connection today. Yep, exactly. Nothing, has, no gak say, repeats in Dean's internet connection. And you could say, so like the, the subcellular angiogen receptor that we don't know anything about, right? The Winstrol and Danazol bind to, yeah. perhaps that's just missing a portion of this and not the full. So maybe it starts there and then it gets worse. Yeah. Right? Do you we think it compares... Do you think it compares to, you have growth hormone receptor, right? Mm -hmm. And that's actually a truncated version of the growth hormone binding protein. Mm -hmm. um, so growth hormone has a binding protein that can actually act as a receptor when it attaches to the cell surface. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's something similar like that? It's possible. The difference with the peptide receptor, like growth hormone receptors, it's never really going to go in. It doesn't mm -hmm. fully go in. It's causing downstream stuff to go in versus an right. android receptor itself will come on in. And that's, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to inject growth hormone intramuscularly because it's not mm. supposed to be in the cell like that. It, when it's, no. it, it's a it's, growth hormone is a cytokine. So if you put it yeah. in a cell, the body has a harsh immune response to it and it mm. destroys it. So you lose 20 to 30% of the growth hormone right. by injecting it in that method, because it'd be like similar, but different than like insulin. Like you, you're not supposed to inject insulin. I am. Right. Hmm. Very interesting. I really wonder if this will ever be investigated and then, if there will be a genetic analysis for it or some sort of solution to prevent people from getting ARAs instead of ARBs. So ARBs I'm, are the I'm currently ones. working on a project with that. So we will see what goes. And I, we well, already started, uh, we have the study outline done. So now I'm, we're finding the subjects that want to do this. Sign me up. You want biopsies? No, oh, no, 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 never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm buying out. No biopsies. I need every muscle cell that and I you, can. Uh, and you're a good responder, so you might not be a great candidate. Yeah. Yeah. True. So if anybody is a poor responder to anabolics, contact Kurt. If you're willing to undergo some biopsies and you live in the United States, maybe you can get uh, some pharmaceutical testosterone prescribed, even though it yeah, might not do anything. Compensation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get compensation. 